Hello, Paul here. It is April 27th. That was a little too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm in the garden here with um, bare feet and um, no shirt. Um, but um, we won't have too much information about all that. <clears throat> but the, um, the soil is really um, amazing. It has, um, there are soil organisms that um, <clears throat> come up through your feet. Did you know that? These organisms come up through your feet. And they, uh, they have therapeutic um, uh, effects on your body and uh, good ones. And uh, so, but uh, I'm just going to do a little garden tour today. We've been hard at work here. And um, April 27th is just a wonderful time. Um, <clears throat> we remember my dad uh, this week because he, he passed last year on uh, September, I mean October. I mean, no, he was born in September and he passed in April 29th um, of last year, 2023. <laughs> And we miss him a lot, but we know he's um, with the Lord and that he's in a better place. But um, this is cabbage, and it'll turn into big balls. And, um, and we got some lettuce here and lots of lettuce. And um, today we planted the sweet peppers. And then um, also um, the uh, pawpaw trees are blooming. And so I'll show you those. You see the black flowers? So these were the uh, food. Oh, there's a fly in there. Look at that. I think that's a fly. Are you a fly? I don't know what that is. I think it's a fly. But they're pollinated by flies. Oh yes, yes. Oh, what a perfect specimen. So not sure how this is coming out, but uh, the camera is... Where's the camera on this thing? Let me, let me figure out. I'll give you a good shot. I'll put my finger there. Yeah, that's the camera. Okay. So right there, it's called the fruit set. So the flowers get pollinated by the flies. And then they have little fruits, little baby fruits like that. So hopefully you can see that. I'll back out. And there's another fruit set here. Oh, this is glorious. Oh, my goodness. There's another one there. Oh, wow. I'm so grateful. Uh, I've been praying for pollinators. Uh, many years we don't have pollinators. A couple of years we had a, a family of six kids that climbed these trees with Q-tips. And I gave them instructions. And they were <clears throat> homeschool kids. And they were really into it. They were, they were a little bored. <clears throat> um, so, um, yeah, there's lots of fruit sets on this one, too. And, um, yeah, yeah, I'm really grateful. And I thought this tree had died, but it's still alive. So um, that's another um, really happy surprise uh, in the pawpaw arena. <clears throat> and so right now we're getting a lot of broccoli. And um, these are broccoli flowers, and I'm going to collect the seeds. But these little broccolinis here are really good. And... Um, don't know how well you can see that. I'm getting I'm getting better at doing the videos by myself, but we uh, we had uh, we were kind of busy this uh, morning, so I didn't get to do it with Felicia and Melanie. But um, um, so that's a little broccoli, and you just snap that off and eat it. <clears throat> and I've been harvesting a lot of these and um, and giving them to um, d different people. We've had several distributions with with those and the leaves, and um, we're getting a lot of uh, beet greens here, and these are just wonderfully wonderful veg uh, wonderful green and they taste great and they come up uh, after a rain they come up like crazy and um and here we have carrots so i'm eating a lot of carrots lately so we got two big rows of carrots and they're really nice um and uh let's yeah let's let's go to the other part of the garden here um and i'll show you some of the other stuff we planted and so, you know, late April is sort of like a reunion. All my, all my friends come back, <laughs> all my tomatoes, my okra, and all the um, things that I um, eat for most of the year, really. Um, but, you know, in the garden, we get food 12 months a year. And that's something that um, people don't really understand. And I tell people, but they just think I'm crazy. And, uh, but we get food 12 months a year out of the garden. And... Um, and it makes sense that God would do that because uh, he put us in a garden. Uh, you know, it says in Genesis 2 that God created man and put him in a garden in the east in Eden. Um, so we have to eat all year. So why not? Uh, why, why, it would have to uh, uh, produce food all year. So, um, so here we have some fennel. And I have a lot of fennel that came up that lived through the winter. And, uh, and then I, I, I had a dead spot here. So I replanted that. <clears throat> And then here we have uh, uh, parsley. And so it's gone to flower here. 
and it, I'll collect the seeds and use them again next year or in the fall or whenever. And um, so there, that's a pretty nice row of parsley. We have two really nice rows of parsley. And then on these two stakes here, I'm going to put some tomatoes. And, um, and there's blackberries coming in here. You can see them coming out. I need to trim the canes, but we have lots of blackberries here. And then these are figs. So this is a special kind of fig. Let's read that sign. It says Peter's Honey Fig. I don't know who Peter is, and, and I don't think this has produced much fruit yet. It's kind of small, but it should this year. But you see those fig leaves coming in there? And um, so, yeah, that's really nice. And um, so, um, and here, I have another row of carrots. And then here, this is something interesting. interesting. This is einkorn wheat. And all of the wheat that we eat um, now is genetically modified, even the organic wheat. It was genetically modified in the, in the, in the uh, 60s and 70s in order to get it to be the right height for the combine to harvest it. It was modified with uh, nuclear radiation. And so, um, but this wheat is einkorn wheat and it predates all that. And so um, the idea here is to, you know, make some bread and see what it tastes like. And it's doing so well. I mean, it's, it's just a wonderful looking grass too. And, um, and so here I have planted some zucchini um, and uh, I've uh, made the hills and water. Just a, a few of them here. This is an experimental uh, variety. And then here we have two, uh, three long rows of tomatoes see, with seed. And uh, we're going to do a fourth. Um, um, my friend Leila Lamani is going to bring some of her transplants and we'll put them on this fourth row, which will be right on, right on, right on. Um, um, line with this post here and then um, here we have uh, the remains of the kale and the, all those yellow flowers and we're going to collect those seeds and we're going to plant corn because I love to eat corn just straight from the garden um, I don't cook it I just sh I shuck it and eat it right in the garden and that's really a lot of fun um, and then here I have some pawpaw some pawpaw seedlings here that I sprouted and this is about two years old they take a long time they take a year to sprout and I need to get that Bermuda grass away from them, um, maybe. And um, yeah, you see that? Yeah, so I'm excited about that. It's nice to be able to grow your own things from, from seed because, um, you know, it's just nice to be able to be generous like that too. And so here we have uh, lots of things. We have um, uh, lots of lettuce here and here. And then here we have more parsley going to seed and yet more lettuce. And yeah, you know, lettuce is, uh, I'll, I'll explain that. Um, so basically, um, I'll turn towards the sun. We have a beautiful sunset. So basically, people are very malnourished. And, um, and they won't eat the, the really n nourishing foods like kale and uh, bok choy that are extremely um, nourishing because they, they just don't know them generally. And, um, but lettuce is, is what I call the gateway drug. Um, and uh, what... <laughs> What, it, what, what I mean by that is, um, I'll show, show you the sprouts while I explain. See those little lettuce sprouts? That's a weed. Um, but basically, everyone knows what lettuce is. But when you have it from the garden, it tastes so good, and it's so much more nutritious than what you get out in, the, um, out in a store. Because what you get in the store is all sterilized, and you don't get any of the microbiome when it's sterilized. So that's why I plant so much lettuce and so this is zucchini and I'll walk down that row you can probably see it from here um, yeah you see right here see these big happy leaves they're just smiling up aren't they beautiful Got a little grass coming in here but these are really good because we can just take these right out to the shelters and people can eat them raw and they're really good and um, and then here we have uh, carrots. We have purple carrots on this row. And then we have Chante, I think it's called Chantanay carrots. And, um, and the weeds grow really well too, so sorry, just can't resist. And then over here we have Jerusalem artichokes. And these are just beautiful plants, beautiful flowers. And they have a root that we can harvest in um, January and uh, December and um, even February. And they're amazing. And then lots more fig trees. So my dad helped me uh, uh, with these, uh, all the, this whole row of fig trees he helped me um, take care of. I was, I think, traveling in Greece 
on business and um, he, he uh, took care of them the whole time I was away and, and nursed them and look at them and they uh, they still are here and they remind me of him and uh, the wonderful times we had together in this garden and they were they were many and um, oh and then this is oh and then yeah I told you what we're gonna do here oh no I didn't so what we're gonna do here is okra now there's a big brown area that goes from there all the way over to that green area and around here and so um the problem with okra is very hard to pick because it's a little itchy and the plants get so big so what i've done and i'll show you this i've made a six foot length here this cedar pole, pole is, or a board is six feet long and so what we're going to do is put them on six foot centers which means the plants going to be six feet apart which means that they'll have a lot of room and they'll have a lot of room for us to walk in between and see and pick instead of just like being at all crowded in that's really hard um so we're learning um we uh we had a wonderful woman that would help us pick the okra and she she explained that they're just too close together and i think we were doing four foot then and now we're going to be doing six so that ought to be a lot better uh and um yeah and then um and then this is a um, goji berry plant. And look how healthy it is. It's just going bananas. Uh, I've never seen it so fertile. And it produced a lot of fruit last year. And I ran over the roots with the tiller. And where I ran it over, it's put out new goji berry plants. So if anyone wants a goji berry bush, uh, come and see me. And I'll dig one of these up for you. And uh, we'll send you on your way with it. And um, uh, I can tell you how to... Keep it alive and in the beginning and that's always tricky um but yeah it's a, just a beautiful time of year spring uh in nashville tennessee is just amazing and um and i'm really looking forward to uh, uh seeing all my old friends the uh the okra the corn the tomatoes and um one thing i like to do with um the tomatoes and the carrots is we have summer camps here and um the kids all hate vegetables because what they get in the store just doesn't taste good. And the reason it doesn't taste good is it, it doesn't have the micronutrients it needs. Um, so what, what happens is when you have micronutrients in the, um, the vegetable, it tastes a lot better. And, um, and so your, your tongue is very uh, perceptive in that way. And that's just the way we're made. And so, um, so I, I have all the kids that hate tomatoes raise their hand. And I, um, and I do this right before lunch because they're hungry. And, uh, and so they raise their hands. And, um, and then I have them try a tomato or a carrot. And they go, wow, this is really good. I've never had anything like this before. And that's because the soil here has micronutrients in it. Because it's a living soil. It's not, um, we're not putting bone meal or blood meal or any of the organic uh, soil amendments that uh, typically are used in um, um, in food production, in organic food production in, in the world. Um, and so um, it has all the micronutrients. Now they don't grow as big, um, but they, they grow very flavorful, flavorfully. And so, um, and the kids love it and they go, wow, you know, what's going on here? And a lot of these kids are, are getting diseases and they're getting sick. And um, hey, this, this, this angle makes my nose look really big. Um, don't make fun of my nose. Um, <clears throat> That's the benefit of being Greek, you know. Uh, we, we get these wonderful noses. Um, and so um, these kids grow up without eating any vegetables and they get very sick. It's sad. It really is sad. And um, so, you know, we need to do more gardening. And, uh, and so we give all this food away um, and 95% of it will, go, will get wasted. It'll get plowed under. Like, uh, you know, these uh, big uh, kale, kale beds that I showed you here. Um, you know, it was wonderful, and you know, the five percent we got was amazing, and we were um, eating it and eating it and giving tons and tons of it away, and uh, but you know, most of it, most of it, just about all of it, really got wasted. Uh, we'll get wasted because I'll have to come in and cut this down and um, and get it ready for the corn, and and same with this row of broccoli here. You know, all these greens and these these greens are tasty. They're much tastier than kale, or collard or um, anything like that. And it's in the same brassica family. But, um, you know, it's going to get wasted. And um, so if you need food or you just want to try some of this food, uh, come on down. Even if you're wealthy, that's fine. If you're poor, that's fine. It doesn't matter. You know, we, uh, we just don't want it to, to go to waste. And uh, you can see in the back there all the leaves and the wood chips. And um, 
So I make a lot of compost and I give a lot of compost away to my friends <clears throat> and uh, acquaintances that uh, and I'll, I'll explain that. I'll bring you I'll come over here um, because they have their own garden, but their gardens won't won't have the micronutrients that they need unless they have compost to get get all the micro uh, get all the life in the soil started. So I make this compost out of rotten wood. I, I, I bury the wood because we have a sawmill and we have a lot of relationships with some great tree companies. But see this here? So this is what, um, what the compost is made of. And um, see how wonderful that is? And so I have a big pile of it here and uh, Kim came and got some and Allison came and got some and you know anyone and everyone who, who, who asked me, I pretty much give it to them. And, uh, and I have a huge mountain of it over there and, um, and I keep getting more and I'm, I'm getting it faster than I can give it. Look at that sunset, isn't that beautiful? I'm, I'm getting the, making the compost faster than I can give it away or use it. So, um, and I have heavy uh, machinery, so it's not a lot of labor for me. And so if you want to get some uh, compost, just give me a call uh, or send me a message um, if you're in the Nashville area. And uh, yeah, so I think that's about, the, uh, that's about it for the garden report. And, um, and uh, you know, leave me some comments or send me some messages about w what's going well in your garden. And if you have any ideas for me, I'm, I'm all ears. And, um, and if you're having difficulty, uh, you know, in your garden, I, I, I'll try to help you as best I can. And uh, so thanks for watching. And we'll, uh, we'll stop it there. Thanks. Over and out.